A friend of mine told me a joke last night, and you probably heard it, but there was a burglar who broke into someone's house, and he heard this voice, Jesus is watching you. He looked up, and there was this parrot in a cage, and he's like, oh, brother. Just kept rummaging around and opening drawers, and once again, he heard, Jesus is watching you. And he just, he just ignored you, be quiet, parrot. Jesus is watching you. Well, he ignored the parrot and started to walk into another word, mother room, and he heard this, <laughs> and he wonders, he heard the parrot say, sick of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in junior high school, I had a friend, I guess I could call her, she was a friend for a while, I had a friend who was a liar. It always seemed kind of strange to me, though. And so when I look back, I'm going to put a gracious spin on it and say that she had a really good imagination. <laughs> She'd tell us that she was dating somebody in another town. Of course, we never met this guy. She was also something of a hypochondriac. And, you know, she was the youngest of three sisters. Both of her two older sisters were pretty and popular. And I think that she just wanted what they had attention. And sadly, many of us pulled away from her. And I say sadly because she really was, and she is, a sweet person. But at that time in our lives, she didn't demonstrate much integrity. And so we turned away. And there's a reason, I, I think of this, and there's a reason why there's a lot of those old saws out there. Be true to yourself is one of them. Say what you mean and do what you say. Those sort of things about integrity. Because living with integrity is important. It's a sign of wholeness, a sign of a solid character. You know when you're in the company of someone who has integrity. Because you get a sense of confidence. That you feel that person when that person is near. I think that sense comes from being able to trust them. You know you trust them. And believe me, if your life is anything like mine, trust seems to be a rare commodity out there in the world. And that's why I was drawn to this text for today. John writes, if we walk in the light, as he himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I got a call on my phone the other night from a Stonington number. And I saw Stonington, so I thought it was probably someone from the church, someone in need, could have, could have been you know, someone calling for help. Well, it was sort of someone calling for help. It was someone calling to do a political survey. Oh, you need those. And mostly it was about the state senate race that was coming up in November. And the caller gave examples of one of the candidates' records as a local selectman. She gave me these names that I had never heard of. <clears throat> and so not even knowing this person from the record that she gave me, I came up with the opinion that this guy she was talking about was, was Two-faced, he seemed to be playing both sides of the road. And so in my, you know, the short estimation, of course they always gear these things, they want to steer you along the road a certain way. I thought that his actions didn't have much integrity. And so she said, well, will you be very likely, somewhat likely, somewhat unlikely, or very unlikely to vote for this person? <laughs> integrity means a lot. Whether it's regarding politics, whether it's corporate America, or yes, even in the church, the polls and news stories don't seem to say very much about any good trust going around. And you know, the thing is, it wasn't, it was also the case for the early Christians. There wasn't a lot of, it seemed like there wasn't a lot of trust, and there wasn't a lot of integrity. The community of First John, it turns out, was in a little bit of trouble. There were these differing views. Yes, when you have a congregation that gets together, of course you have differing views. 
But these differing views were undermining the life and the teaching of that community. And one group broke away when they said, yes, Jesus is the light. And they got that part right. But then they missed the point of Jesus' sacrifice and said, now they have no sin. One Bible professor wrote, any faith community who confesses one thing and acts in a contrary manner is deceiving itself. So we can't reach out and change the political system overnight or stop corporate greed. But what we do have control over is our actions. We can make sure that what we do lines up with what comes out of our mouths. That's pretty much what this text is asking of us. How do we have fellowship with God, who is light, if we walk in darkness? How can we say we have no sin when we are sinners? And you know, in the congregational tradition, we don't always talk that much about sin. And directly talking about it, we definitely avoid it. But if we break it down to this, I think it might be a little palatable. Sin, put simply, is separation from God. We separate ourselves, or I might say, we might turn our away, awareness away from God and toward other things. I'm speaking of hinted at that in our prayer of invocation today. We don't always intentionally turn our back on God, but neither are we inviting God's presence whenever we are doing things or whenever we are meeting someone. Asking the Spirit to be with us in whatever we are about, that is what we need to do. And that splinter group from John's church, that's how they missed the mark. They thought, hey, Jesus took away all our sins, so now we can do what we want. But John explains it for us. Though, even today, I'm not always clear about what Jesus' blood donation is and how it's supposed to work, John easily speaks about how Jesus dying, his death, his very blood, could somehow make clean that which is not so clean in me, and in you, and in everyone. Even so, John says it so beautifully, if we walk in the light, and he himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I invite you to hear this as an invitation to place yourself in God's care, knowing that we are not always right, they're not always good, we're not always on track, and yet, despite that, we are always under God's protective care. It's sort of like that stain lifter you see on TV commercials. When we fall and get grass stains on our knees, God is always there to lift us up, brush us off, set us back on course. But the integrity part is remembering to reach out that hand for God to grab hold of. Reach out that hand first, turn to the light, and live with integrity.